here. Um, what have you seen in terms of the corrosive effects of uh, senility? I mean, seniority. Sorry. <laughs> Exhibit A. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, first of all, as I mentioned, and, and you all started off with, there there does uh, grow a presumptuousness of invulnerability on a political level, which breeds bad behavior both towards constituents and, frankly, towards others who are elected. Um, and you talk about having to work across the aisle or with uh, across the bridges within your own caucus. Uh, that gets harder and harder to do. The forced turnover that would be imposed by term limits, um, I believe, is far more conducive to civility. Um, people will behave more normally. I don't know how many of you knock on doors, but it, one of the things that astounds me in politics is it is the one area, even religion doesn't have this, uh, where people will instantly drop their manners, just abandon them, start screaming at you at the door, uh, and I'm not talking about even when you're a candidate, like I've been and like these folks up here, but when you're just there to talk to a neighbor. And uh, there's something about American politics that has reached a point um, of ugliness, even down in the neighborhood level. And I believe if we had more turnover, if we had more citizen participation, which is what the founders intended, it's what they expected, they didn't expect 40-year careers up here, um, and if the people elected knew they were going back to their community, not as an elected official, I think you'd see a lot different just behavior that would be more conducive to constructive discussions and debates where facts would matter more, data would matter more, um, and it wouldn't be the continual flame-throwing, emotional-based um, you know, one arm of the media versus another arm of the media that we have devolved to. That didn't happen overnight. It took a long time to get to that point. And it would be, frankly, a lot more merit-based. And with all due respect to all three of the folks up here, there isn't a congressional district or state in this country where someone who hasn't served in Congress isn't perfectly capable of doing just about as good a job as the person who's there now. Doesn't mean they're willing, they can put it all together and run campaign sort of against the odds, for instance. It doesn't mean they can do all those pieces, but let's not kid ourselves. Ronald Reagan said once, he has many great quotes, one of them is, if the best minds were in politics, business would hire them away. <laughs> now, I've been in that boat, so I'm condemning myself. Um, and to <clears throat> Paul's point about have a different career first, those experiences matter. Term limits actually forces that kind of experience into the system, even though the system doesn't want it. Nick, Nick can I? Yeah, yeah Congressman Blum. Yeah, I just, I just have a quote here that uh, follows up what uh, Ken said perfectly. It's by George Mason, and the quote is, nothing so strongly impels a man to regard the interest of his constituents as the certainty of returning to the general mass of the people from whence he was taken where he must participate in their burden. Yeah. Reminds me of uh, what John Adams said about wanting this university of rotation, you know, population of lots of former lawmakers within the citizenry who could hold the current guys uh, accountable. You mentioned restoring civility, Ken. You know, I can't think of any issue that would do a better job restoring civility than something that has supermajority support with Democrats and Republicans. I mean, this cuts totally across party lines. Politicians are always saying they want to be bipartisan, and yet they refuse to take this up. Let's make